Here's what we're buzzing about at News Beast. John Corzine missing $1.2 billion from MF Global. Something tells me this one's going to get worse. But first, our cheat picks. Good morning, guys. What you got, Nick? Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, newly discovered Ebola vaccine. Um, I don't know why, but this really makes me happy. I, <laughs> I, you know, I think that all of us, on some level or another, kind of kind of have always thought that we would get Ebola at some point. I, really? No, I, I guess I'm think most of us have thought that. that I guess I'm a bit of a hypochondriac, but... <laughs> yeah, but, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, you know, with the holidays coming up, I think, I think it's sort of a Christmas miracle, and with Europe about to crash, and we all prepare for President Newt, it's just one worry we can cross off. <laughs> How about it, science? See, I've only joked about getting Ebola. I've never seriously been worried see, about see, it. I mean, in a way, I have to agree with Nick, because if you look at movies, journalism, I mean, some of the best books from 10, 15 years ago were about the spread of the viruses and the fear True. of viruses. Some yeah. great movies. I, I actually, I was a skeptic at the first four seconds you were talking. Sleep, but sleep not one easy now, Gary. All right. <laughs> sleep easy now. That's right, Gary. So that's how about it, science. Gary, what's your cheat? See, I, I'm going to go with anything connected to the 2012 election. So I'm going to go with Mitt Romney was <laughs> caught, it came out that he spent $100,000 to basically steal all his computers in the governor's office when he was the governor at the end of his tenure as governor of Massachusetts. And, you know, he, he, there he was on Fox last week saying, oh, you misunderstand my, my, my record, you misunderstand my record. No, we understand perfectly what's going on here. His greatest uh, uh, foe is himself, is his own yeah. record. Yeah. And what does he do? He steals the record so we can't, we know as little as possible yeah. about but what happened. And this as, is, yeah, when as we get closer to actual, you know, votes being cast in, in, in New Hampshire and in Iowa, we're getting to see all this great oppo research that's been <laughs> <laughs> sitting in a drawer, I think. Well, a, a lot of the oppo was, was done four years ago. What's stunning about Romney is, first of all, people forget that he didn't run for re-elect in 06 because he would lose. Right. The right. second thing is, is while this is technically legal to essentially buy all your computers and erase them, I mean, it is such evidence of, of paranoia culpability and that he is running from his record, there's simply no way to deny that. It is what it seems. I, I mean, what I think is so fascinating is Newt Gingrich kind of stands a chance because Romney has this, I don't even call it a Tupperware approach. He's like hermetically sealing himself. <laughs> and so he won't answer any questions about He's this. in the pocket. And meanwhile, everything said about him is negative. I'm going to bring it out to Russian politics. I think this is a huge story. United Russia, Putin's party, getting getting destroyed in the last election. I mean, getting becoming a, a minority status. There are protests in the streets. The, the police are arresting protesters. And basically what it looks like is is that they, they stole an election they still lost, which is sort of hard to believe. I mean, they'd only authorized three other parties in the ballot, the communists, the nationalists, and sort of a, a, a joke party. And they outstripped them. So Putin is running scared. It's a sign that people in Russia, it's not simply this docile acceptance of, of a permanent Putin presidency. This is actually getting interesting, and it's related to the economy, but election fraud's not working in Russia, that's a good sign for all. Because we see an Arab Spring drift north into Russia. I want to see it. Russia. I want to see a Russian Spring. Yeah, I mean, it tells us we didn't really understand what was going on in Russia, because I think all of us, most of us, would say that, you know, Putin just has the place locked down. I was shocked by that story. Well, the, the, the amazing thing is they apparently did make efforts to steal it and still lost. All right, but let, let's transition to Corzine. I mean, this is amazing. Here you got the governor across the river, uh, longtime governor, head of Goldman Sachs, U.S. senator. After losing to Chris Christie in 2009, he sets up a, a, a new shop and... and $1.2 billion is mi missing. He's getting called to, uh, based on bad European bets. Yeah. And the fact that the Wall Street Journal story just nakedly refers to it as bets yeah, somehow right. bothers me the most. Yeah. That this is not investment anymore. This is just yeah. betting, and it's dumb betting. Yeah. Hey, well, um, well, you know, Michael Daly has a good story in, in Newsweek this week, which I, there's this one line that jumped out at me. Uh, the Corzine's either, um, he may have been either the worst of the good guys or the best of the, right. of the bad guys. <laughs> right. And it wasn't necessarily, you know, sort of nefarious, uh, mm -hmm. you know, stealing money from people. It was just idiotic, extremely over leveraged betting, 50 to 1, and it just, you know, I, I, just I mean, learned nothing. I mean, what gives us a pathological edge, I mean, there's a marvelous story by Michael Daly. Everyone, as soon as you're done here, yeah. just go read that. It is a if great wanna, story. If you're Absolutely. interested in the and rise and fall of, the great ones, yeah. of this U.S. senator, governor, kingpin, former kingpin of, of Goldman Sachs, you need to read this. But, you know, I mean, it's about hubris, it's about greed, but what gives it this pathological edge is he was giving speeches post-2008 about the risk in leverage, that, oh, Wall Street's problems, they over-leverage, they bet 20, 30 to 1. What did they end up doing at his firm? He bet 50 to 1. And, you know, that, what that means in English is for every dollar they actually had, they made $50 worth of bets, they bet $6 billion on Europe, and it's no wonder there's money missing. Do, do you think Corzine could end up going to the pokey? No. 
I, I mean, th that's what because only Martha Stewart goes to jail for stock infractions. Yeah, well, exactly, one point you know, two million dollars. As Daly has pointed out, you, know, you you can't have a beard in federal prison, so I think he'll cut a deal sometime. The, the best I, J Daly's James Poulos, a friend of mine, tweeted a great joke. He said uh, he said that uh, John Corzine had a shame beard; he just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> final word, the final word. What's your final word? Uh, I'll stick with beard. <laughs> Entertainment. I just think the 2012 election, the first uh, primary, at least caucus, is less than a month away. I I'm riveted. Russian spring hyphenated. <laughs> That's all for us today at News Beast. We'll see you here tomorrow. Yeah. Well, the final weird. word is about the subject. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I thought it's about whatever we like.